another one for you. When is the game? 8 p.m. Oh, bollocks. I'm trying to. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, oh, thank you so much, Toby. That's so, so nice of you. Um, I'm trying to organise another. Another bloody. Thing I'm a bobber. 3v3, but no one seems to be online. Which is rather annoying. Um, I will think about it. It depends when people get on. Because I played a 3v3 yesterday. It was, it was pretty good. It was a beast of a match. But um, unfortunately, him and Sura uh, lost connection. So they lost connection probably about you know most of the most, they already played most of the battle and they kind of committed all their troops but then they unfortunately lost the connection um, but I mean I still I still view it I mean it was a still pretty good battle uh, it's just I'm trying to do one for a 50th upload so that's who I'm going to play as I'm not going to play as them but uh. okay so this is Xenoroth he is in the red corner and he will be playing a modern army. I, on the other hand, will be playing an awesome traditional army. Sticking to not or not <laughs> not sticking to my guns, sticking to my swords. What am I on about? Um, I played him, I think, the other night, and so what? Probably about the twenty seventh of November, twenty twelve, for any of you guys. So, I played him two nights ago, and. Uh, it was a low funds match. You would not think so looking at my army. So, he's modern. He is a... Oh, God, I can't remember. It says here that he's a one-star general. Um, so, I didn't want to pick an army that was too harsh. Because, obviously, you know, I'm... It says here I'm level 6, but I'm level 8. Urgh! God, why does it do that so much? It keeps on saying that I'm a lot lower ranked than what I actually am. It's annoying. I like, I like these little... These white balloon things, they look like ice cream. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but they look pretty damn nice. Um, but anyway, so I decided to pick a fairly modest army, one that he probably could beat, but at the same time, it was a low funds. So my general cost about 1500 Koku. So I needed some nice cheap units. Okay. Uh, PM me on. It's a well-constructed utterance there. The syntax of that sentence was immaculate in its grammatical being. Anyway, I just threw a load of jargon on there for you. Oh, jargon! Oh, God! Uh, I need to stop coming out of these semantic fields. Oh, God, I'm just going to stop it, guys. You've probably got, not got an idea what I'm going on about linguistically. So, I've got three Naginata attendants. I'm then also backing up my Lone Sword. Four Lone Sword units. Uh, some Naginata attendants on the side. And Captain Cabinet, along with two light cab, it looks like. Um, on the other side, Xenoroth is also filled in some red bear, red bear, red bear, red bear, uh, bow catchy, and some yari catchy. He's also got a yari cab hidden around somewhere as well. And obviously, there's General Zeno. So let's get cracking into the battle. Um, the what are these? These little key buildings. We've got Sword Dojo. We've got the farmhouse, which is, oh, I mean, it's obviously the most important building of the game. You know my opinion on that, really, so don't let my sarcasm get in the way. And then there's also the archery dojo. This is the one he's going to be wanting to cap, and he does, which is a very, very smart move. So I'm going to put this into fast forward, because obviously this is going to take a while. So I dismount my light cab, and just march my whole army forward. See, the good thing about bringing a load of really crap units is that you get a lot of them for a low fun match and I didn't want to be bringing along you know really high vetted up units because you know I mean A they'd get chunked down too quickly but also at the same time um, it would be a bit unfair as well on him because um, obviously if I'm bringing these super vetted up units I want to kind of make it a bit more even and bring some pretty crap units um, oh no we missed a little fight dang I really, really wanted to. I really wanted to show that. Um, basically, he's got some Yari key, and he attacked my light cav because they were capturing the sword dojo. Um, 
if you've got enemy cavalry charging at you um, and your spear unit, like your spear cavalry, it could be any spear cavalry, it could be Naginata warrior monks, light cav or yari cav, you know, any spear cavalry that's capturing a key building and is being charged by enemy cavalry, keep them on the ground. Don't mount them back up. Just keep them on the ground, stood there, um, still basically, and let them take the charge. Because obviously, if they become dismounted, they become spear infantry. Spear infantry versus cavalry is obviously going to pwn. So that's really what you want to be doing. Um, that was a mistake he made, but then he quickly pulled out, which was good. Um, but yeah, I mean, always do that. I mean, if you're capturing um, a key building, or if you're being, if you're just about to be swarmed by a, a splodge of cavalry, which is vastly superior to yours, dismount your guys, um, because they will usually win if they're spear units. Well, they won't usually win, but they'll deal a lot of damage. But you see, the only downside with that is obviously that um, if you if you dismount them, then obviously their horses are vulnerable. All the opponent then has to do is run his cavalry into the horses that have been, um, you know, that aren't obviously mounted anymore. All he has to do is run his units into those vacant horses, and the horses will disperse. They'll run away from the battlefield, and your riders will have no one to mount. So they'll have no cavalry. They'll just become a spear infantry unit who have lost all their cavalry. So that can be a good idea if you're playing against someone who's dismounted their cavalry. I definitely advocate that sort of behaviour. Charge your cavalry in, try and hit their um, their unmounted horses, and the horses will just run and they'll become a infantry unit. Um, so that's a good idea to do if they're not going to mount back up. You see, obviously, again, if, if someone's charging over a superior cavalry force then obviously dismount and then you could just take them on easily but that all depends on whether they're going to stay in the fight with you or they're going to just hit your cavalry like your unmounted horses so after enough of that ranting and repeating myself he takes a position at the bottom of the hill um, good move good move he didn't want to be running up the hill because as soon as he ran up the hill I would have charged back down at him um, and I'm hidden just I'm hidden away just over this ridge so he won't be able to shoot to me if he advanced. And this is pretty good positioning by him, I have to admit. I mean, I, I'd say probably get a little bit further back, because that way I've got further to run, but, you know. Um, and he's also going to put his Bokachi up front, which is a good idea. He's going to put his Yarikachi near the front, which is, again is a pretty damn good idea. Um, we're going to be going a bit back and forward now. Um, what's good about the workshop and the sword dojo is that now the stats of all my troops have boosted quite significantly. The lone sword of all got 12 melee attack, which will come definitely in handy when fighting against his red bear infantry. When someone's playing traditional and you're playing modern, always pick red bear because obviously they they are the melee um, kind of negator, if you like. They like to cancel out traditional armies because they are melee specialists but this is a bad move he pulled up his his troops to far too much and now he's faced with this ridge here so really you'll only be able to shoot at people who are probably about here you know it's kind of a bad idea to do um, but I mean really you always in then he moves back which is a good idea but unfortunately he loses precious shooting time while doing this um, whenever you position gun troops always you know pan your kind of pan your camera down low enough so you can see line of sight that is definitely something I would say to do um, and I've now just crashed in all of my well, where is it my yeah I crashed in one of my light cav into his Yari Kachi because I'm hoping he'll just shoot into his own guys and also give my guys a free advance into his lines um, Trying to kind of get and poke with my light cav a little bit. Um, his Yari key is there, and they're going to be trying to frantically run to the flank to try and ward off this light cav, which is an excellent idea. Um, again, you know, you want to be focusing your modern general on my traditional general. 
if not focusing these guys on my general because gun units versus general they're going to do very very well I'd also say uh, yod. I'd also do also say sorry um, try and try and get some units some really crap units like I don't know spear levy or something to just hang in front of all of your um, all your gun units to try and keep them just try and pin down the enemy charge because then your guys can just shoot into the back of them because you know they're spear levy they're crap really they're not really going to do too much they might get one or two kills but really they're just kind of there to make sure the enemy troops are held in place for your guns to fire um, there's Captain Cabinet oh there's Captain Cabinet with this funny little spike thing let's see him just destroy someone I'm not moving till we kill someone Cab he's a cool looking general oh yes yes that was so awesome oh my god that was so good oh I just saw Captain Cab's just decapitate someone oh my goodness he is rocking it oh beautiful anyway we're going to get down a day to where the, what the actual battle is <laughs> going like it's katana cat that's oh, sorry it's yari catchy should i say are oh, beginning to run away um at this point i'm feeling pretty dominant i'm thinking yeah i've got this got this in the bag um but you know i mean my morale is pretty good but then i think all of a sudden my general just seems to have died. <laughs> Captain Cabinet is no longer alive. He no longer exists, unfortunately. Um, so now, obviously, obviously because I've got Yarishigaru, no, sorry, not Yarishigaru. I've got Ashigaru units, and I've also got attendants. Um, their morale is already low enough as it is. So then, bringing along uh, just all of these low morale units along with my general, which then died, is not going to be healthy for me. Um, all he really has to do with his general is micromanagement. He just has to uh, run away, kite, shoot a few times. You know, I mean, that's all he really has to do um, while all of my guys are running all over the place. Um, I would say, however, is try and keep your low morale guys together as much as you can. That's what I would say, because then obviously they've got that feeling of number there. Um, two of his red bears come back from routing and so I just charge back at them because I've I kind of feel I kind of feel that it's pointless chasing after his uh, his general but unfortunately his micromanagement went out the window a little bit and um, I managed to charge in my naggy attendants and deal a little bit of hurt to him um, that was unfortunate for um, for Xenoroth uh, but I mean all he really has to kind of do is just keep on kiting, my guys are on really low morale anyway, and then he just, um, he should really win just from kind of kiting and shooting with his general, but unfortunately the rest of his army is taken, he sustained heavy casualties himself, and he will now just begin to rout, and that's the end of the battle. So it was a very close battle, I thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, thank you Xenoroth for that battle, I did add him as a friend as well, like I do to most people now. Um, he's a very good guy, um, and yeah, I mean, it was a good battle. I like the idea that I took a lot of units because they were cheap as well, but also because I didn't want to bring any veteran units because obviously that'd be a bit unfair that I'm about level eight and he's level one or two. So I think that's always a nice idea as well. I mean, if you're really high rank compared to someone else, just you know bring some. Bring some fairly average units or something. Don't always just bring a load of veteran units. Um, you know, it can just be a fairly nice thing. I mean, don't do it all the time, obviously, but you know, I mean, every now and then I like to kind of do it just to make the battle a little bit more fun. And it's more fun for the um, other opponent who's a lower rank than you as well, because the idea that they could be beating someone who's a lot higher rank than them, you know, it's, it's just a bit of fun, good, good bit of sportsmanship. Um, oh, Lone Sword, they did well. I think I did this battle as well because I didn't want to use my veteran units because I was using them for like a 2v2 with one of my other buddies um, but yeah I mean all the lone sources did well bloody hell the Yari Cav did well um, let's go into his units his units did very well um, the first three units racking near 200 kills there that's nice 
um, another two. I mean, they're all racking up a lot of kills. I think Bowcatcher are a little bit pointless, but obviously for that 150 range, they can have their uses. So I hope you've enjoyed this battle, and uh, bye bye for now.